Hello and welcome to episode 175 of Checkpoint Chat. My name is Alessandro Barbosa. I'm joined by a Friday evening, Friday Night Lights, Matthew Figuera. The laggy. <laughs> Matthew Figuera, just look a, at this. A, li- a little I'm just jello-y. Gonna swear. So that you, camera, you know, camera trying its very best to <laughs> adjust its exposure the, the every theme, time you move your hair. The theme of every second episode, I'm sorry to say, is technical hiccups. And let me tell you, this 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 week's story is that, well, first of all, apologies for last week. Those technical difficulties Listen, were not yeah. our fault. Okay. You can Out you of can our write, hands entirely. Route to ESCOM. They'll they'll tell you. <laughs> They'll, They'll tell, tell you, you what to is get up. fucked. That is, that is a legit thing of like, cool, we're going to record on the Friday. Oh, load shedding. Okay, Saturday. Oh, load shedding. Okay, baby. Oh, load shedding. Like, it just didn't work out. So, rip last week's recording. This yeah. week, you know, last week, I mean, a week before that, I ended up formatting my PC after we, we recorded. Um, I thought I had everything set up all nicely because I backed up my OBS. And I mean... Let me tell you, from a streaming point of view, I streamed this week, had no issues. My scenes were there, didn't have to move anything. Come to our profile and it's like, your your face is cropped weird. My webcam is just not set up right in this profile for some reason, so it's not super smooth. It's It's fine. You just have to tell me you don't like seeing my face. You don't have to crop me out of the (laughs) podcast. I mean, it, I'm gonna I'm, spend. I'm a grown man. I can take the insult. I'm gonna spend the next hour and a half deciding if your face is warped or not. <laughs> it you looks see? fine. You it you, looks fine. You're in. You're in control. I mean, you can do whatever you want to my face, and there's very little I can do in return. No, I can no. make your voice sound weird on the recording, <laughs> but that's not the same. It's that's sweet, just funny. Sweet you know. payback. But yeah, we we recording on a Friday because I'm away this weekend, and mm, you have can very you see how graciously dark it is outside of Matthew's room. Oof, you've graciously it's, granted me a Friday evening recording. Your listen, like at, at the end, of, like I was thinking, it's actually a pretty good time to record because then I don't mm. have to get up early on a Saturday, um, which is nice. But at the same time, I am fucking exhausted by I the know. end of the week. So Friday evenings, it it's a bit of like. Will you get the full energy Sandy or will you get morning sleepy Sandy that will come in to the podcast as the morning goes on, as the caffeine and adrenaline kicks in? You know what I mean? You best believe that both editions of Friday evening Matty and Saturday morning Matty have been yawning leading up to this. (laughs) (laughs) But Saturday morning Matty might be powered by Friday evening pizza. Maybe, so, maybe. Today you it's know, a Friday night a curry, one. which I'm going to eat Oof. after. What, uh, is it homemade curry or is it takeaway no, we, curry? No, we got takeout. From where? I think, I, I don't know. I just told Lenska that I wanted a chicken korma. So it Ooh. might be from our Indian place on the same okay. strip as Franco's, which name eludes me now. It's, oh, is there one there? Okay. What is it okay. called? I so, can't for the life of me remember. I have to know because th- this this comes up sometimes with uh, Indian takeout places. Like I stay away from chicken kormas purely because I find like most places it's just too sweet and it's not meant to be like, I mean, it's meant to be, you know, it's not meant to be like super spicy or korma's got a sweetness to it. But some places just feels like they just took sugar and just went, you know, and just Why like, are you complaining? No, I'm kidding. No, nah, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's too sweet. I do like that the chicken korma is very creamy and like it's... Yes, it's, uh, it's extremely, sweet. yeah. Um, Suppose, but that's exactly it. It's supposed to be creamy and a little bit sweet. Some places I'm like, wow, this could have been a milkshake. It's too much, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Like curry milkshake. <laughs> That, I, that, my that go-to somewhere. <laughs> my go-to is usually a, a good butter chicken. I love oh, butter chicken. Love a butter chicken. See, but I, I at like, the end of the day, curry is just a vessel for me to eat naan. Exactly. So. It's very. It's got a lot of parallels with the Portuguese food. You know, Portuguese food's a vessel for you know that uh, buldakaku or oh hell something. yes yeah. Mm. You order it. You're not ordering a trench chowder for. The delicious cubed beef. You're ordering it for the huge bowl of sauce you can dip your bread into. Hell yeah. Chips, I mean, so. nine times out of ten, if I ever order livers at Nando's, I'm actually not eating the livers. <laughs> I'm just there for that sauce. You, you, know? lo- you throw the livers out and you just have the sauce. I mean, livers are gross. Just so the sauce. Like, I, I don't like eating livers. I find they're... The texture's I'm, 
You know, Weird. if I wanted to eat something that tasted like I was eating blood, I would just bite myself. It's cheaper. Wow. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get the um, sauce with it. Though. So did you get some? Did you get some naan? What type of naan do you usually go God, for? I, I hope I hope Lens did it. We we normally do though. It's probably a garlic or butter naan. Mm. Hell yeah! Or the combo, garlic butter naan. Oh my god, it's too much. Fuck yeah, it's too much power for one naan. <laughs> you, there, there's a naan my mom usually gets called. I might be butchering the name, but it's called Kish, Kishwari naan. I think it is. Mm. So it's got like little pieces of nuts and i think little pieces of like caramelized or dried fruit on it and Ooh. a little bit of cheese it's real fucking good some it's cage really fucking good mm-hmm. yeah it's cage cage yeah Delicious. i was actually at um at a good old uh portuguese consulate this week again i met my mom there because we were picking up the la passports the um, passports went to bain Baum. can i tell you listen i love bain Baum. best prestige in joburg Mm-hmm. And they're a franchise, so that's like fucking double points. Yeah. Uh, you can go to anyone and all of their push stage. Really but chef's kiss. you know what they cannot do is a mm. fucking coffee. Oh my God. What? They just a- burn the shit out of okay, their coffee. Maybe, maybe that's the constant one because we've got a bane ball close to us in Northcliffe. Um, mm-hmm. And there is one in Bedford as well. But yes. the one the one at Northcliffe, we've had take out coffee there before. And it's funny because like... Like I'm not gonna argue. It's not. It's not a like the best coffee, but mm. it is distinctly a Portuguese coffee. There's something that all of them hues or do that just makes me think that I'm sitting at a little cafe, a little Madeira. But that's Portugal. what you want, you know. You mm. wanna you wanna have a pushte in a cafe that's again, like you said, not because Portugal doesn't do the best coffee in the world. Like, no. I'll admit that. But you're right. It is a distinct Portuguese coffee. This yeah. I ordered a double espresso. And it tasted like they had taken the coffee grinds from the last coffee, shoved it into the little thing, and just brewed coffee through that again. It was just like doubly no. roasted. It was Spe- fucking speaking, terrible. Speaking of Portugal, did you get any notice to collect anything at the post office recently? No. Uh, yes, maybe. No, not that I know. So of. I know in Portugal, it was two or three weekends ago, they had the elections. Oh, so, okay. So I got a. I didn't a thing. know that. Well, uh, we we've got some. Uh, one of Lenska's um, family friends lives in Portugal, so we we just heard because it's not like mm-hmm. I knew either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but long story short, I got a notice to like something from the post office, and I'm like, oh, is this a fan or what is this? <laughs> Go collect, and it's my letter from the Portuguese consulate to cast my vote. And I'm like, I've never received one of these in my life, but. What made it even funnier is that I got this about a week after the election. So nice. Sorry, uh, good old South African post office. In, sorry, all candidates in Portugal. Uh, my vote. You could have been the cast. swing vote, Matthew. You know, Madeira Can might have seceded so from Portugal, but it was Ronaldo, your vote that kept Ronaldo them there. Ronaldo might have might have won the presidency. Could have been <laughs> President Ronaldo. You know, President Football. Uh, but he wasn't there. Damn you it. denied him. I denied him. Um, yeah. Sure. Sure. My goodness. Yeah, I listen. I, I mean, it, it could still come. Like the post office is a fucking nightmare, as we all know. So, uh, yeah, I I don't know. Um, but know. I will say that uh, the concert is shit. I hate I hate that place so much. We, My we've God, we've had we've had such different experiences because I went before COVID, and I, I promise you, we Lenska and I had like the most delightful time at the consulate I, I must be i must be fair i had a delightful time with the person that had to you know deal with me for my for my renewal of my passport it was like book a time okay they're running late whatever who fucking doesn't run late a doctor runs mm. late i don't care um <laughs> and then the lady was really nice did it all very quickly whatever it's the fucking people that have been there for like 20 30 years mm. the old guard there that think they own the world you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and the fact that they take one form of payment, one. I find not credit weird. cards, I, I not swear, check cards, I not swear cash. I paid card there last time as well. Debit card. And I was like, yeah. so I took cash because I was told, I was like, cool, debit card. I'll take cash. They're mm. like, nah, we don't take cash. I was like, uh, got, I don't have a debit swindled. card. <laughs> must, must, I take, must I take out a debit card account just for this place? And they were literally like, yes. I was like, 
fuck you, all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that because I wanted my passport, you know. I want, you I want my it, entry you to the motherland. said it in Portuguese so that I understood you. <laughs> <laughs> God, God, yeah. But other than that, I mean, there's a bean bomb upstairs, so I got a prego afterwards. I felt good. It was okay. Mm. You know, the world, the world carried on. Balance, yeah. it's, it's all about, about balance, balance yeah. yeah. It's all about you balance. Uh, you know what else is about balance? <sighs> Balancing these video games Yo, on this podcast, so many hey. video games. So many, yeah. Actually, Jesus, I, it's kind of weird calling this a lull before like a storm because it's been busy as hell. But like, is, if you're listening to this on Monday, uh, well, you, there's no way you could be listening no way to this earlier. earlier. <laughs> um, this week is Horizon Forbidden West week. Mm-hmm. Next week is Elden Ring. And then we're basically in March, which has a whole uh, lot of other stuff. There is like a big game in March that is like completely flaky Isn't in my the, mind right the now. The Kirby game coming out in March. There we go. That's the big game Kirby? I was thinking of. The Kirby yep. of us too. I mean, I don't think that's what you're thinking of, but there is a Kirby game coming out. There is in a March. Oh, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo is coming oh, out Ghost in March. Ghostwire Tokyo. There we go. Yeah, pretty dope. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you watched the the gameplay of that, but that I thing watched, looks I watched pretty fucking cool. It. it looks interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The animations on the hands, very cool. Like, mm. get that studio to make a Doctor Strange game. I rate they could pull sure. it off. Oh, that's actually a very good good idea. Because there's some Doctor Strange shenanigans going on in that game. Hell yes, there yeah. are. Like, when you, like, leash an enemy and your character's, like, pulling threads on this, like, mm. ethereal yeah. leash and using their fingers in weird ways. It, I, I got real Doctor Strange vibes mm. from all of that footage. But game looks dope. I'm... Mm. It also looks super weird, which I think is why I think it it's looks so cool key. because I, I I can't people are like oh it looks like Far Cry I'm like okay really how like, in I what don't world agree. does that look like Far Cry <laughs> they're like oh it's open world and there's towers and this and that oh, like, yeah, then I mean, Horizon Horizon Forbidden West is literally Far Cry yeah yeah Ghost Rider actually looks Far like Cry. Forbidden yeah oh my god um, Elden Ring open world game literally Far Cry. <laughs> Can't wait to climb the towers on my goat. Oh God, Far Cry. That that's a weird comparison. But Jeff, there's... but speaking of uh, open world games, um, I've uh, dipped my toes into the lake that is uh, Dying Light Two. Mm-hmm. So uh, I know both of us were big fans of the first Dying Light. I absolutely. I remember it. Uh, being a big surprise because I didn't expect it to be good. And then the reviews came out and it didn't seem that good. Um, and then I played it and I was like, this shit is cool. The parkour it feels really fun. The combat's mm. fun. It's like, yeah, it's got a terrible story. You know, <laughs> like Whatever. the combat is a bit janky at times, but hey, running away at night from raging zombies and parkouring over roofs to Some get to a hard, safe hard house. Stuff. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty ah, cool. So- yeah. Before I've been excited you, for this game. Yeah, before before you dive into that, sorry, just I have a special spot for Dying Light, particularly because it, I played it a preview at the first Gamescom I ever went to. Um, oh, I, I didn't realize like, that that overlapped yeah, at that point. Yeah, so okay. it was like one of the early builds, and I was like, God damn, mm. this game is really cool. I can't wait to play it. And then I never played it on launch. I only played it like two or three years later when, when I think – they they released a bundle with the expansion basically there was a um, yeah there was a like an enhanced edition or yeah, something because they so, put out a lot of dlc for that exactly so yeah. I, I played the enhanced edition which you know was the base game and a whole separate chapter and let me say when i played that i was like yeah there's a reason i enjoyed this however many years ago at gamescom it's it's really Pretty good. great so, yeah yeah building up into dying light 2 it's the same thing of i can't say i've been you know salivating going oh my god dying light mm. two's around the corner mm. but it's one of those things where i know it's coming i probably will enjoy it Let, let's see how it is when it releases i'll get to it but you've actually played it so yeah i mean it was one of those games that i i never got a chance to see it at the last e3 um sadly uh but i remember that everyone who went to the demo that i was chatting to there was like whoa, this shit is like really, really cool. Mm. And um, it was sort of like the same thing when they showed off Cyberpunk 2077 for the first time at E3. Yeah. Like I I walked away from that. I was like, holy fuck, this is like mm. insanely good. And then the day after Darren and Jeff went to see it and they were like, oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, and like, I got the same sort of vibe from people seeing Dying Light 2 there. And it turns out like 
a lot of that demo was smoke and mirrors, you know, <laughs> no real shock here. I mean, Cyberpunk Never. 2077s was very similar. Um, but in the limited stuff that I've played, um, it feels like more dying light, which is cool. Mm. Uh, the the part where I'm at now, I haven't really been unleashed onto its big open world. I And I've seen in a lot of reviews that it is a real slow burn at the beginning uh, before you get to like the open city and get to like kind of roam around and yeah. make your own path through things. Um, but if you play the first one, I think it'll feel like it'll feel like, you know, just an extension of that game. Like you've still got the weird placement of the jump butts and it's on the bumper, uh, the right bumper. Right. And your parkour like is governed by where your vision is. So if you jump and there's a ledge above you, you don't automatically grab it. You have to look at that ledge so you grab uh, it. So yeah. it's a very much like, I mean, if, if you're unfamiliar with Dying Light, but you've played something like Mirror's Edge, you can think of it like that. It's very mm. much in that sort of vein where the parkour isn't, automated for you it very much mm. is like you have to think about where you're jumping and climbing and grabbing and get into that sort of like flow yeah. um and that feels pretty good still so mm. i'm i'm excited to be like unleashed onto a, a city and and make my own paths through there um mm. i did play a bit on initially we got code on playstation 5 for it um i mean obviously if you only own a ps5 and you don't own a pc you can play it there. It's got like three modes or something. I think it's like resolution, quality, and frame rate. Um, so the frame rate drops the game down to like 1080p mm. um, and removes things like all ray tracing and stuff, but it runs at 60. But I think the game looks pretty rough. Like at that, pretty like, ugly. yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it runs fine, but Jesus, it does not look great like there's areas mm. where it just seems like the shadows are just non-existent <laughs> like it it doesn't look great oh and God. then you know the ray tracing quality mode it would adds ray tracing but it drops the frame rate down to 30 and that looks a lot better to me mm. um but then you have to deal with like a very fast-paced game running at 30 so it doesn't feel the best all the time uh, uh but i i recently got a copy on pc and that is just I did not expect to see such a disparity between a PC and a current, current gen console gen, yeah. game this early, but boy, there is like a gulf between them. Mm. Um, obviously, I'm running on very good hardware and it's punishing that hardware, but the fact is that there is the ability already today to run a game so dramatically better than consoles that came out just over a year ago, which yeah, is kind of staggering to me. Mm. Um, so yeah, if you have a PC... And especially if you have an NVIDIA graphics card where you can like really crank up the settings and use DLSS to like rein in performance, I would 100% recommend that because it just looks miles better on PC. Mm. Like it's not even a contest. Um, so yeah, but nice. I'm still playing it. I've only played a handful of hours, so I'm keen to play more of that. Um, mm. I haven't really gotten to parts yet where I can tell the difference between this one and the first one. Um, yeah. So yeah, but keen to to give that a go nice. still. Um, and then elsewhere, I've finally started uh, Dark Souls Three, um, a game ah. that I've owned for like four years and just haven't got to it. You know, it's funny is that you and I share our PlayStation accounts. Um, Dark Souls Three, I played on off your accounts. <laughs> you did, yes. <laughs> so, I, I played it before you did, but thanks. Thanks for the experience. I mean, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but what, what what was the push? Because I remember telling you, like, you know, with Alden Ring coming up, it's it's very much, you know, it's like if you, it looks like an evolution of Dark Souls. Um, and I know mm. you've never, you'd never played Dark Souls 3, but you love Bloodborne and Sekiro. So... It's like, huh, you should play Dark Souls, but yeah. you, just, you just didn't until now. What I think I always push? had this idea that I'd like play all the Dark... Because like like you said, I've played Sekiro and Bloodborne and Demon Souls, but I've played a bit of the first Dark Souls, but mm. I've never finished it. I've never yeah. played the second one. Um, So actually, I did plan on playing the first Dark Souls. Uh, I loaded up mods on my PC. I did all of that. and. Um, the game just kept crashing on my PC. So I was like, fuck this. I'm not going to deal with this. So mm. then I just saw Dark Souls 3 and I was like, you know what? Screw <laughs> it. You know, I've got this itch it to play. Time. 
a from game like i was this close to just starting Sekiro again because i really want to play that again i was like let me just play dark souls 3 and um yeah it's good (laughs) shocker like it's fucking great it's Mm. definitely a different thing to bloodborne and Sekiro, which doesn't surprise me at all but i think coming off of demon souls like just over a year ago Mm. i'm a bit more in tune with that sort of like much slower gameplay yeah um and it does take like a few hours to it took me a while to like kind of reconfigure my brain to be attuned to the pace that it expects Mm. of me um because i was definitely going in with a far more aggressive mindset and the game was punishing me heavily for that Mm. um yeah it's it's fucking great like like you said when you played it it is uh it is a good mix of like a souls or a demon souls uh Mm. with some ideas that they've pegged off of bloodborne so like yeah. i can see the weapon styles and arts make aggressive play a lot more viable you said you played with a um <laughs> dexterity dual wield build dual which is style. like <laughs> yeah something you could never do in the previous games um i'm playing a very boring stock standard sword and shield build but i'm having a great time with it mm. um and it's just it's kind of amazing the variety of locales um you know you start in like old very high fantasy castles and stuff but you very quickly go into like weird ass swamps and now i'm in this like snowy village place and uh Mm -hmm. i i I do find something strange though like i felt like bloodborne you know bloodborne came out before dark souls 3 but bloodborne to me had a more defined um sort of world in terms of the way you could navigate through it Mm. everything folded in on itself and everything felt contained in like an open world while i feel like dark souls 3 definitely has hubs you know yeah, what i mean it's, it feels like i don't know More if it's necessarily bigger but it's it it somehow feels like there's yeah you segmented is probably the, the right word it feels like there's a lot of different areas but they don't necessarily like link to each other mm. Neatly, mm. a la Bloodborne. Bloodborne, like one even of even just the the starting area, you have to travel to like the filing shrine outward to where the game really starts. And I was like, mm. oh, that's weird. That reminds me more of Demon Souls with its you know arch stones as opposed mm. to Bloodborne, where you can go literally back to the bed that you started at like at yeah. any point in the game. Exactly. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's it's good. It, it is an interesting way to change the thinking about it because like you are now limited to estus flasks uh Mm. so you know you've got a number of charges on there instead of having uh you know um what were they Uh, blood Blood, vials vials, in in bloodborne which you had to farm you know Mm. but you could have 20 on you at a time so there's a a neat balance between those two things um and there's the the typical from software bullshit that you don't really like realize until it's happened like i met a character who came back to my camp and then gave me a free level. Essentially, I didn't have to play, pay any souls. <laughs> and I was like, that's mm-hmm. definitely going to have a consequence to it. And lo and behold, it gave me a status called hollow mm-hmm. or hollowing. And I was like, okay, I see the status <laughs> and it keeps going up, but I'm not sure what's triggering it. Yep. Um, and then I started noticing some bizarre <laughs> shit happening. Like, Every now and then I'd I'd use a charge of my Estus flask and the charge wouldn't go down. <laughs> like I would heal, mm-hmm. but the charge wouldn't go down. And I'm like, the fuck is going on here? So I did some reading because mm-hmm. I was just curious. Turns out the hollowing increases your luck stat like invisibly behind the scenes. So that's why I was getting free Estus flask charges on there. Nice. And also my guy was like busy dying in the background. Mm. Uh, consistently he's, so he looks a bit like a corpse now yeah which is interesting because the effect is actually what was your like death states in dark souls one and two mm. whereas this one it's different yeah um but then i went back to the camp and the dude that pers- uh, apparently as as i was reading this i was apparently the more the higher level of hollow you have the more free levels you can gain from this dude so mm. i'm like sick i can go get two i might as well like whatever yeah, you, you go back to camp spot. someone's murdered him and i'm like <laughs> what is going on <laughs> it's yeah it's, it's one of those things where oh, it, it's so obscure but, but i love it mm. you know it's, it's great i mean it reminds me a lot of bloodborne where like there would be like these interpersonal battles in the chapel depending on who you sent there mm. um and depending on 
how many times you spoke to a character versus if you sent a character there, you would end up with like different events happening when mm. you came back. Um, yep. So yeah, it's the typical from software way, but uh, turns out there's a shrine which I found, which I can pay souls to, and it took away the hollowing. So mm-hmm. hooray! Back to I'm normal. No longer Huzzah. dying in the background of my <laughs> I, character. Yeah, but yeah, I need to replay Dark Souls because uh, I did it once. Uh, but you know, mm. you'd know because you've done it with Bloodborne and Sekiro. Those games are worth playing again. Maybe maybe Sekiro not so much because you know it's not really a game that lends itself to different builds per se. Like mm. you can change your playstyle on the fly, which is pretty and cool. It, and its story is pretty straightforward. Exactly. Whereas Bloodborne it's a thing of like, okay, I'm gonna start with this weapon now, then I'm gonna change to that weapon. I'm gonna level up this thing. So Dark Souls is the same thing of I've only done one run and I loved the hell out of it. Um I need to go back and play it again. But I, I've had this itch to, like you said, to go back and play all the Dark Souls. And may, maybe after Olden Ring sometime later this year, I will mm-hmm. do a, a little trilogy playthrough or something. Because why not? Those games are fantastic. I think the thing I still appreciate about Bloodborne more is that it might be stupid to to think this, but like it is to me, it feels like the more more accessible one uh, okay, if you if you toss aside Sekiro, you know, because Sekiro yeah. in terms of builds and stuff is like incredibly accessible. Um, yeah. But in terms of difficulty, super not. But Bloodborne is like the weapon you get right at the beginning is the weapon you can literally end with. And you can yeah. not give a shit about any other weapon in the game. Mm. Um, and it's even easier now after a few patches because you've got enough crafting materials to mess around with other weapons without ultimately you know, screwing yourself by the yeah. end yeah yeah um so i i think you know i think my hesitancy with dark souls has always been like oh my god these build it's far more of a role playing game in terms yeah. of i have to really think about what build i'm doing whereas mm. in bloodborne i'm like saw cleaver putting in points into vitality and stamina that's it it's that's so my simple, build yeah that's it mm. yeah um and I think Demon Souls definitely opened me up to to that because Demon Souls very much is um, you know, it's very the... hardcore in its RPG mechanics, mm. even more so to Dark Souls. I think they made it progressively easier to pass as time went on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm still managing the game with a sword and a shield and I don't feel underpowered. Uh, I don't feel overpowered. I just feel like I'm bad at the game. <laughs> every now and then so yeah it's great i'm I'm having a good time and i think i I don't think i'm anywhere near the end because i've only killed one of the main five bad guys or whatever and i assume i have to kill all five of them to see credits so i can't yeah. remember but yeah it is a it's a it's like a 30 to 40 hour game yeah so. i think i'm about 14 or 15 hours in okay but you, um, you've made a dent yeah. in it though which is quite cool i so. did yeah i i was really banging my head against the beginning but i feel like that's happened to me on every single one of these games the first like five hours is you just like becoming comfortable with the game's pace mm. and i was stuck on like one of the first bosses for a very long time but once i got yeah. them i just made so much progress after that like yeah it was crazy so yeah you, uh, eventually something on, just clicks so yeah. yeah are you playing on ps5 mm-hmm. is there is there like um have they unlocked the frame rate for example because you're on a ps5 or is it still 30 fps no so it was always unlocked oh, uh, always even unlocked, on ps4 okay. it was always unlocked yeah okay. so it just runs at a great 60 frames per second okay it doesn't look like the greatest game because it's quite old now and there's mm. still like some weird pop in here and there, but at least, <laughs> you know, like Sekiro, it's running at 60, so it do, feels great. Do me a know? favor, launch launch Demon Souls, play for an hour, then go Jesus. to Dark Souls. It's, Come I did it's, that, I played I played Demon Souls and then I, I bounced to Bloodborne because I had that Dark Souls itch. I was like, oh, Bloodborne is real ugly. And Bloodborne's not ugly. Like Bloodborne yeah. still looks really good, but just compared to Demon Souls, it's like damn. <laughs> Demon Souls is lavish. Demon yeah. Souls looks phenomenal. Still, mm. like ah, oh, Blue Point just remake Bloodborne at this point. If they're not gonna fucking unlock the frame rate for us, just just remake. Fucking remaster it. Yeah, just do something <laughs> with it. Oh god. Oh uh, well, I'm glad. Yeah. You're or you can it play too. the the PSX remake on. Uh, on ah, PC I just wanted to get to that. Is that it's pretty is that, great? Is that the full game, or is it just? Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's this ridiculous. Is a full game. What? It's ridiculous. And it's like, I think I mentioned to you before, it's not just a, 
oh, this is Bloodborne and now it's got PS1 graphics. It it's is like proper. redesigned gameplay wise to feel like a PS1 game. Like oh my God. if you want to use a key, you have to go and equip it in your inventory and then press X on the door so that oh no. you can only use a D-pad. You cannot use analog sticks. Oh no. <laughs> it's it's wild how much work was done on this thing. It's pretty fucking awesome. So, That's yeah. cool though. I must check it out. Cool. Yeah, but I keep 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 playing chipping away let me know when you get to the next boss because i know exactly who you're gonna fight yeah i enjoyed the uh the bosses so far have been so varied um really liked i really enjoyed uh well once i beat him the abyss watcher was really mm. good um and then deacons of the deep was real fun well, that's so, a uh, bizarre boss fight. very very but, uh creepy but yeah enjoyed it. but uh, i'm excited because you fought some good bosses but there are some proper iconic bosses that you haven't Got, yeah. got into yet so mm. waiting for the giant i know he's coming oh my god you let me know when you fight the giants and i'll tell you how i beat him <laughs> <laughs> cool have you been playing anything else or is that it ah uh, that's that's pretty much it yeah that is what have okay. you been up so to? i'm gonna fly through what i've been playing because i don't have like lengthy updates but i did roll credits on lost legacy um we, we spoke about this on the last episode you did a, a full-on review and mm. like i said just to recap uh, i'd never played lost legacy i played uncharted 4 in its heyday loved the shit out of it and lost legacy just slipped under the radar so having the um this collection of games on the ps5 was it just a really nice excuse to play you know a shorter uncharted experience but arguably one of the better uncharted games um you know and i i love all the uncharted games but lost legacy is is really special in that it's 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 quite short you can finish it in you know seven to eight hours but the pace just feels really good um mm-hmm. the story it tells with chloe and nadine is also just you know the banter between them two seeing their relationship grow throughout the game from not trusting each other to you know having each other's backs and then there's obviously a not obviously there's a little surprise inclusion of a character that i'm not going to spoil for those who haven't played who makes makes an appearance about halfway through the game maybe two-thirds mm. through the game mm. it's just really nice like it's naughty dog having fun in their own uh universe if i could call it that um and just gorgeous holy hell that like i, I i'm sad i didn't play it on the ps4 because seeing this on that you know, all these, all those years ago must have also already been like, holy hell, this is yeah. unreal. And just having it run super smooth on the PS5, just pausing in to take those, those lush vistas in uh, India. Mm, what a, what a treat. So yeah. I, it's I, great, I, eh? I yeah. imagine, I imagine Uncharted 4 also, and I know Uncharted 4 looks good. So mm. yeah, if you've not played either, definitely check them out. Um, yeah. I, to me, it's just like a perfectly paced Uncharted adventure. Yeah. Like it's, it, it's you got can't like, get tighter than that. Yeah, it's got like its nice little intro. And then it goes to an open world area, you know, a, a hub that you can explore at your own pace. And then it goes into a linear finish, basically. Mm. Um, but yeah, really great. And man, some of those set pieces. That's Oof, yeah, real cool. good. I don't want to spoil it, but but that that last stretch is also quite something. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was a nice change. I mean, Uncharted 4 was, for all intents and purposes, less about the treasure and more about Drake struggling mm. with, you know, his choices between his brother and Elena. Mm. Whereas I think Lost Legacy let them do a clean break of like, let's get back to just being it's just a, a fucking Indiana Jones hunt. film yeah. again. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, which was cool. It was a nice change, change mm. of pace. Um, so yeah, game's yep. good. It's real good. So I've been playing some of that. I've still been chipping away at Pokemon Arceus. So Oh yeah. Last time I we don't spoke think about you've this. had a chance to actually speak about no. this much. So so last time I spoke about it, it was you know, after having played not even an hour. So it was really early days for me. And when I spoke about it, I couldn't really explain, you know, this is how the mechanics work, whatever. But I've put in about 15 hours now i'm gonna say mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. uh yeah pokemon arcus is a really 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 good pokemon game um it's interesting because like coming into pokemon recently in the last two years you know it's the sword and shield was my first actual game that i rolled credits on 
And then I've, I've rolled credits on Pokemon Emerald. Just uh, It's not Emerald. Shining, Pearl. Shining Pearl. I always have Brilliant to say the name. That's one. <laughs> Shining <laughs> Pearl. And I've only, I only played those two. And already then I was like, okay, I see this formula. And it's fine. But you mm. can't have this formula for however many games they've had the same formula of, you know, Europe. And it's been decades. Buddy, it's Literal been decades. decades. You're, a, you're yeah. a budding Pokemon trainer and you're going to have to delete all, uh, delete, defeat, <laughs> 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 defeat all these gym leaders and then there's going to have to cancel form. all of the gym leaders, you know, <laughs> you find all of their the bad tweets. Exactly. Know? Just, just delete them. Okay. <laughs> um, but even, you know, I, I'm, I was never a big hardcore Pokemon fan, but I, even I could see like, you know, this formula is stale. Even mm, even me playing mm. it, it feels tired. So to bounce to Arceus, which is for all intents and purposes, like a soft reboot of the the franchise. Um and interestingly, they've they've just done a whole history thing of they've put it back in time before there's gyms and all these things that we know in Pokemon games. And it just feels so different and so fresh. Mm-hmm. Um and if I were to describe it, um if for, for those of you who don't know, it's it feels like the, I'd say, the child of Pokemon Go and something oh. like a Monster Hunter. And I'll explain why. Um, so in in previous Pokemon games, if you wanted to catch a Pokemon, it is always a thing of you've got to get yourself into a random encounter or run up to a Pokemon, mm-hmm. depending on what you're playing. Attack them, do get them into red health or whatever, and then throw a Pokemon ball and then, you know, hope you catch them. Whereas mm-hmm. this one, you actually have the option to just roll up into a meadow, sneak up behind a Pokemon and throw a Pokeball at them and just catch them. And it it feels so seamless and it it's just a, such a nice change. It doesn't feel like the game, you know, stops me all the time to be like, okay, you're going to fight now. Okay, you're going to try catch this Pokemon. Okay, you're going to fight now. There's no so like of, little screen no, transition. It's, yeah. yeah, so I, I, I mean, I just run up into a meadow. I say, oh, you know, there's a Pikachu for whatever reason. I, I can throw a Pokeball and chances are I might catch it if I snuck up behind it and it didn't see me. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it, that's not the case for all of the Pokemon. There, there are harder ones that you actually have to battle to, you know, what's the health line. But just having yeah. the option and the, I suppose, the in terms of volume, the reason I compare it to Pokemon Go is that in Pokemon Go, you can walk around, see gyms, and there's just Pokemon everywhere. And you don't have mm-hmm. to fight them. Mm-hmm. You just tap in it, you throw a ball, you catch them. It just mm-hmm. feels nice to have that in a mainline Pokemon game because you can build your collection very quickly. Um, catching Pokemon gives you experience, so I, I don't feel like I'm lagging behind. I need to grind any, anything or anywhere. Um, yeah, it's it's just such a nice change of pace, and I'm I'm enjoying it, and I'm very keen to keep digging into it. Um, and I'll give you know more in depth thoughts when I've probably rolled credits on it in the near future because I think I am I'm. I'm definitely taking my time, um, you know, exploring, catching Pokemon. Every time I roll into an area, I'm definitely, you know, catching whatever I don't have. But I am still making progress in the story as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, d- just I did mention it feels a lot like Monster Hunter as well, is that they are just hubs that you can run into, collect resources, catch Pokemon, and, yeah, it's, it's just really fun. So, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do it more of a deep dive in the near future um so yeah other than that i have also just this week started i've played maybe an hour and a half two hours of the new game sifu um ooh, ooh. which is i guess you could call it a kung fu roguelite because <laughs> it's 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 got this element although even saying that it it kind of is and it isn't. So Sifu, for those of you who don't know, is is basically a game where you are a student who is avenging... Well, you're a a child avenging their parents um, who has been murdered by someone. I don't know yet because I haven't played, you know, the game enough. Um, yeah. But it's... That's it, a hectic premise. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't doesn't pull its punches. It starts off quite, quite heavy. It's quite an interesting prologue. Um, but it it's, for lack of a better description, it feels like a... You know, like a, it's got elements of a fighting game in it because you know it's a kung fu game. Um, so you on this path to I don't know find whoever killed your father, 
And in doing so, you encounter a lot of random people and you don't have any, and there's no guns in this game that I've seen. You just use the power of your fist <laughs> to, dish out, <laughs> to, to dish out some sweet justice um, in some tight hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, and the reason I, I make I compare it to a fighting game is because it, it's not quite like a, you know, a Hades where you you just dive in and you know there's a dash, a light attack, and a heavy attack, and that's that's probably the the extent of what you have to know, you know, to play the game outside of getting different boons and weapons, whatever. Sifu is a thing of you start off and you've got a light attack and a heavy attack, but you also have a block button, um, and you can do. Not not combos necessarily, but there are button prompts you can do to help you progress. So, for example, you can hold a block button and tap down or up to either avoid a low attack or a high attack. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, a there's a system that's very much like Sekro Sekro's posture bar, where you can hold block. That's fine, but your your for lack of a better description, your posture bar is going to fill up, and then it's going to reach red and then you can't block anymore you're going to be open you're going to get stunned and open yourself up to attacks um mm -hmm. whereas if if you time your your block to you know line up with an attack you'll do a deflect and you open up the enemy to you know for a counter attack to do some damage so there's definitely there's definitely depth to the game on that front where it's not just a button mash or anything you, you know there's a lot of things to take in when you start it's actually it feels a little bit overwhelming um because they really throw a lot of stuff at you mm -hmm. uh, but in, in my opening two hours i've i've made it through the first level and i'm really having a good time um i i, I think it reviewed pretty well i know jeff isn't so hot in it um but he and sort of, darren darren as well not oh, happy is darren also it. not really enjoying it um but yeah. i know i know jeff he he sort of enjoyed it. Then he got to the second boss and he's like, no, not for him. So I haven't got there yet, but everything before that, like I've really enjoyed it. Um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, what would you, so Sifu's strange one, because every time I hear about it from different people, it seems like people have a different idea of what it is. You know what I mean? So some people will be like, Oh, uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's sort of like an evolution of a beat em up. Some people are like, wow, this is actually just a fighting game with sort of like, not really roguelike, but like yeah, progression elements in a yeah, way. Yeah, that's why it's, I mean, when I started talking about it, I was like, it's a kung fu roguelite. So I was like, it kind of is and it isn't that. It is a mm -hmm. very difficult game to describe because, so in my head, a roguelite is a thing of, you know, you do a run, you get to a boss, the boss kills you, you start at the beginning again. You know, okay. You might have some progression, permanent progression or whatever. Um, in Sifu, you, there's this aging mechanic, which I haven't quite wrapped my head around yet. But if you go down in a fight, um, your character has these magic coins, if I could call them that, where you can basically trade a year of your life to get back up again, um, right then and there. So it's like this weird balance of you have, like I, I can completely understand the comparison to say an arcade brawler because it mm -hmm. kind of feels like oh, I've gone down, I've put in a, a coin into the machine, I'm, I'm hitting continue. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously the caveat to that is if you age too much, you can trigger a game over state. But that, that being said, the game feels very forgiving in that. if So you start at the age of 20. If you go down, you revive, you go to 21, 23, 20. I think it does it in incre increments of three. You age a year, you age two years, you age three years. So you, you can age relatively quickly if you play, you know, if you, you're very sloppy or whatever. Um, but I found that sometimes I just go back to the start of the level and I don't lose so many years or anything. And I, I, I mean, you, you reset your progress, but... Mm. But, you know. Yeah, I've read it's got an interesting um, progression mechanic where, like, at the end of each level, you can restart the next level again, but mm. you can only start it at the young, the, the youngest age the youngest you finished you got the there. previous level at, exactly. which is quite an interesting. I think it's quite. I mean, I can see how that might be frustrating because you're like, well, I basically need to go back and play the next one before even attempting the new level. Mm. But at the same time, I assume the gaining is designed around that because like if you aren't getting through that first level at a certain age you are clearly not prepared exactly for the so, challenges coming yeah. yeah so i mean again to reiterate i'm i'm early days so don't take my word for it but i found with the first level 
you know, wrapping my head around the game, I was reluctant to age. I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just start again, you know, because okay. it's the first level, whatever. And yeah. I was able to beat the first devil and the first boss at the age of like 22. So, you know, uh, uh, there's some leeway in that. It's it's an interesting system in that if you're a newcomer to this sort of thing or you're a newbie or you don't want to spend too much time like grinding out levels, it feels like this this weird continue system that I alluded to earlier mm. where, you know, you can just keep continuing through the level. You're going to lose some years, but you know mm -hmm, you, it mm -hmm. lets you progress and if you were to die like hopefully when you restart the levels aren't long i mean i think again i'm thumb sucking but if uh, i'd imagine speedrunners are, are finishing the game in like under an hour you know just yeah i've seen i saw some streams on release day where some reviewers are like you know i can now play the game back to forward in one life and they were doing it in like two hours so. exactly so it's not like this exceptionally long game so i think it is a, a very interesting balance of you know you it, it just caters to people who might not want to spend the time like perfecting the system if i could call it mm -hmm. that but again I, like I, I keep on stressing this i'm only on the second level like i can't say i've had super challenging enemies or anything that have you know anything that's made me go, oh my god i need to grind my way through this like obviously i'm still learning the the buttons and the prompt because like i said there, there's a lot to take in like there really yeah. is a lot of systems and button prompts and you know you can do you can do a sweep attack and you can grab enemies and you can do this and that like there's really a lot to take in um but i can't say i've hit a wall yet and i don't know if i will maybe i will and i'll go yeah the system works or doesn't work but at the moment i feel it's, it's quite fair it's very interesting as well so okay yeah. I'm keen to I'm keen to get into it. I mean, I bought it. I just haven't had the time to mm. to get around to it. Um, I'd I'd be keen to hear your thoughts. Yeah. I think you would like it, but I mean, you might have the same concerns the concerns as Jeff and Darren. Yeah, I yeah. I I feel like based on what I've heard from the, you know, from just listening to people talk about the game and reading about it, like, I'm not entirely sure if I'll enjoy this because mm. there's just elements to it that I'm like. Mm, you know, maybe that sounds a bit frustrating or whatever. Mm. But you know, I'm I'm really still curious to give it a go, like actually yeah. give it a try. Um, mm. And you know, if it doesn't click, then Elden Ring's around the corner. It's okay. <laughs> if it doesn't click, Elden Ring will make you cry even harder. So exactly, exactly. That goat, that good goat, will console me. My goodness. So yeah, Love that's, goats. I've I've just been dipping in and out of some games, but hopefully this time next week I can talk a lot more about some things. So, yeah very cool. cool very cool um shall we get to game releases game we jobs. should yes let's see vg oh that is 2021 oh boy mm -hmm. uh God, there we go let this window work oh, praise be <laughs> So we are looking at games releasing from today or I guess tomorrow, uh, March, sorry, February, February 12th up until February 18th. That's the one. My so goodness. let me just find this. Da, 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 da. Quite a few games actually. Sure. Cool. There's a lot. Busy season. Um... So firstly, we have Lost Ark, which I've been seeing a lot of on social media this week. I guess there was a like early launch or something like that. Yeah. Um, maybe for, you know, like get three days early access or whatever. But this is another game from Amazon and this seems to be being received quite warmly. Um, I think out of all the games they've put out, this is the one that I see people actually talking about quite fondly and like excited okay. about. So. That's cool. Um, I'm still not entirely sure what it is. But oh, anyway. God. Sorry. I'm trying to mm. pull up questions here. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. On the side. I, no, I no, wasn't no. watching a Discord. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so I'm like busy scrolling through Twitter quickly. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, we've got Not Tonight 2. Not Tonight Satan 2. Um, not Tonight. February 11th. Die After Sunset coming to Steam Early Access on February 11th. Infernax. I guess that's if your knickknacks come from through the facts. The machine. Inferno. This is what <laughs> Doom guy snacks on. I don't know. My goodness. Um, 
PC, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S and Switch. Uh, Super Dungeon Maker, Steam Early Access PC, uh, February 15th. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you like fighting 10,000 enemies, also known as Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires, coming to My goodness. PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox, and even Switch? Holy shit, can you believe that? How will that game run on Switch? <laughs> I ask Poorly, with, I assume. <laughs> with tears in my eyes. Uh, the King of Fighters 15, PC, mm-hmm. PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, uh, February 17th. Total Warhammer 3 coming to PC, February 17th. Fluffy Cubed, didn't realize we're getting Kirby this early. Uh, <laughs> coming to nice. all platforms on February 17th. Uh, Assassin's Creed, the Ezio Collection. So that is Assassin's Creed 2, then Brotherhood, and then Revelations coming to Switch on February 17th. I you think that will that. run pretty well on Switch, to be honest. I mean, it's, um, the game's old now. I mean, it's like two, yeah, two fucking uh, generations old now, so mm. it better run good. And then the big one for the week, uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Also, this is a crime in the list because there should not be a colon after Horizon. That's not how it works. Why? Why do studios do this? Because look, in the in the in Horizon's case, not not the case, right? No no colon. But there are some games that are like game colon description dash more description. You're like, why? Just give it a name, an easy name. Don't mess with your SEO or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, I, I it, to me, it's still weird that there isn't a colon in the name. Like I thought there was, but now that I know there isn't, mm-hmm. that's just the rule. So there you go. We should all just follow it. Um, um, but that's it. But that's it. Yeah, I'm very stoked for Horizon Forbidden West. Mm, uh, very likewise. keen to see reviews coming out this week because I know media has had uh, oh. access to it for a while. We don't. Valentine's we. Day is the is the review embargo. February fourteenth. I think it's Monday. I could be wrong. So if yeah, you're listening, it could be Monday, today. Yeah. So yeah, you could could have reviews already to look at. Who knows? Tell us. Tell us if it's good or bad. I can't but. tell the future. <laughs> Only you can. My goodness. Because you're can't loving either. it right now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. That's games out. Shall we get to? The news. news. I mean, so very quickly, um, because this literally just broke while we were uh, recording. Really? Oh boy. W- which is great because I knew it was coming today. I just didn't know when. Mm-hmm. Um, Call of Duty, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Call of Duty Warzone 2 both launching in 2022. That's a lot of twos. Um, My goodness. Both of them... Oh, developed by Infinity Ward. Maybe announced today. Hang on, hold up. Where's, where's the latest news here? <laughs> Is it, it only on Twitter? Been, I definitely, definitely seeing it. I can link you. Okay, I will link fine. you right I now. I don't know. I don't know who Invin Global are, but they've got the scoop right. <laughs> Scoops. Uh, so yeah, it it is being. Built up on a brand new engine, which is interesting to me because the first Modern Warfare remake, remaster, redo by Infinity Ward was on its own new engine mm-hmm. that then Call of Duty Cold War did not use. Um, Vanguard did use that engine. so And now hmm. it's a brand new one all over again. So three years for three games, I guess, Modern Warfare, Warzone, and Vanguard, and a new engine now. So that seems strange to me. Um, but the big thing going forward is that this will be the only engine used for Call of Duty, which I think is the smart call, mm. uh, because I think having um, Treyarch work on a different engine and then try and integrate shit into Warzone and connect yes. those two engines was an absolute fucking nightmare, Yeah, uh, which is why I think Warzone 2 is going to be a standalone thing. Um, it is not like... You know, I think I think they've just overbloated the client yeah. uh, with it, Warzone. It's too one much, now. man. I mean, yeah. okay, like I, I played Warzone when it launched, and I really enjoyed it actually. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the fact that it was a hundred and fifty gig download, and then patch after patch, it's not like, hey, here's a five gig patch. It's like, hey, here's a hundred gig patch, and you're like, why? Yep. Why? Yep. <laughs> How does they, any they, of this make sense? And basically, if you're just downloading Warzone, you have to download the whole of modern warfare even though you can't play it because warzone is just a free-to-play game so it's like it's really confusing um yeah. So, so yeah 
well, I think it's Warzone, a good clean break for them. Um, yeah. Also, hopefully, yeah. Warzone 2 has a smaller in-store size. See both yeah. play. <laughs> Hope so. Hope so. I'm I'm stoked for Modern Warfare 2 because I really enjoyed that uh, remake or redo of uh, mm. Modern Warfare. Um, I definitely, if, if you had to give me that Cold War and Vanguard as, you know, the last three Call of Duties, that's definitely my favorite mm. one. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Pretty stoked. I think Infinity Ward make great Call of Duty games. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, I think you mean Xbox make great Call of Duty games. So. Well, <laughs> speaking of segues. <laughs> oh, my. Where Microsoft. Oh Microsoft boy. swears Call of Duty won't be exclusive to Xbox. Now, this is interesting. So, Microsoft has been very outspoken this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, are not just on traditional gaming press, but like they've been on traditional news uh, networks and whatever. I guess kind of like hedging their bets on the assumption that they are going to be investigated by the FTC or regulatory bodies for this uh, purchase of Activision. And so yeah. they are making it very clear up front of all the things they are changing so that they are not seen as a monopoly. Um, yeah. And part of that is like a... Um, app store uh, new policies for the app stores that are going to change, which might um, you know affect the sort of cut that they take from developers, um, the availability of third-party payment platforms, is so sort of what Epic Games has been fighting with Apple for mm. for so long. They're trying to say we have an open app store, so we're not a monopoly because we cannot buy studios and lock them behind anything if our garden isn't walled. You know what I mean? Yeah. So as part of this uh, statement, there is a um, two paragraphs here that specifically mention Activision and then Call of Duty. Um, so I'm just actually just going to read it out here, these two two things, because I think trying to read between the lines like doesn't give you the full story. Mm. Um, so it says, first, some of our com- some commentators have asked whether we will continue to make popular content like Activision's Call of Duty available on competing platforms like Sony's PlayStation. The obvious concern is that Microsoft could make this title available exclusively on the Xbox console, undermining opportunities for Sony PlayStation users. To be clear, Microsoft will continue to make Call of Duty and other popular, uh, popular Activision Blizzard titles available on PlayStation through the term of any existing agreement with Activision. And we have committed to Sony that we will also make them available on PlayStation beyond the existing agreement and into the future so that Sony fans can con- can continue to enjoy the games they love. We are also interested in taking similar steps to support Nintendo's successful platform. We believe this is the right thing for the industry, for games, and for our business. So that, to me, seems very clear that uh they don't want to make at least at least all of duty an exclusive mm. however it is still hand wavy and vague enough that that could just mean one game like yeah. a free to play warzone for example mm. um which to me would make the most sense but at the same time i can understand our well arguments now that all oh, call of duty will stay multi-platform like a minecraft scenario Mm. I think ah. them naming Call of Duty specifically so many times indicates to me that it's only going only to Call, Call of Duty. Duty. Yeah. yeah, that applies know. to this deal. I'm st- I'm still in the camp where, um, like, it, Minecraft's a good example, I guess, because it sells still sells like hotcakes across every platform. It doesn't matter. And Call of Duty, I think, is the same thing. Of You can definitely get value in the sense of, hey, if you've got an Xbox, you can play Call of Duty on Game Pass. Mm-hmm. However, if you don't, you've got a PlayStation, you can buy it. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's, still, it's still money coming to Microsoft. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting because I, I completely hear, uh, get the argument that, you know, if they make it exclusive, it will like literally sell Xboxes because people, some people only play Call of Duty and they want yeah. a Call of Duty machine. So, And to be honest, yeah. the thing that will drive people to Xbox is not that. It's the competitive scene. So mm. before PlayStation had Call of Duty locked up, you know, they had the deal to advertising and competitive uh, rights, it was Microsoft. So the Xbox 360 enjoyed a lot of success on the back of Call of Duty 
competitive play being mostly on there. And now with Microsoft owning that, you can bet it's going to switch again. Like once yeah. whatever fucking existing agreements are there, because that is the longevity of the game. That's why the game continues to sell. And, mm. you know, if all competitions are played on Xbox, people will buy the game on Xbox if they are yeah. taking the game seriously. Um, and then you run into the same situation that Sony, it, w- which this situation is even more bizarre because it's actually published by Sony, but like MLB the show, is mm. published by Sony, <laughs> but it's day one on Game Pass. So yeah. you can pay $70 for it on PlayStation or subscribe to Game Pass and get it for free on Xbox, which will be applied to Call of Duty. So Also, yeah. related, MLB The Show 22 coming to Switch. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, Amazing. that's a whole new thing as well. Um, I mean, it could be that there are already discussions in place to have Game Pass on PlayStation, in yep. which case... Call of Duty remains exclusive, but only accessible through Game Pass. Um, I could see that. What a weird time to be alive. <laughs> I know. It's, again, it's it's fascinating to me that Microsoft is being so much more explicit in this mm. regard uh, when you compare it to Bethesda. And I think that is literally down to them expecting some regu- regulatory issues mm. um, around this. Um, obviously, they can't... can't, they can't like talk about concrete plans until the acquisition goes through yeah. but they can say we intend to do x y and z um when the deal goes through but when it does go through if they decide in after two or three years that like yeah we'll keep warzone on playstation but new campaigns will only come to xboxes and they can do that you yeah. know if you look back at the industry two three years ago it was so different to what it is now like mm-hmm. it's very difficult to predict where it's going to be there and where microsoft is going to be as a company there because like three years ago game pass was fairly new and still mm-hmm. everyone was going this is not going to last and <laughs> fast forward three years microsoft is like the game pass is the hottest thing in the industry in my opinion mm-hmm. they own bethesda and they're about to buy activision so like mm-hmm. yeah interesting times interesting yep. times uh, cool. Do you want to choose the next one? Yeah, let's let's pivot to um, you know the the random person in this whole conversation. Forget Sony and Microsoft because we've got a third party here in the form of Nintendo, who are doing the most Nintendo <laughs> thing. <laughs> Just casual they, Nintendo thing. So they're stretching Kirby on a car. Stretching Kirby on a car. So you wouldn't eat a car. <laughs> <laughs> so earlier this week, they, in typical Nintendo fashion, they just quickly announced there's a, a direct happening, and then the next day, a mainline Nintendo direct happened. And let me tell you, if you, I, I love to say, I I love that approach. It's like yeah, you can just, just wake up on a Wednesday, and the day's just going by, and next thing is like, boom, Nintendo boom, direct, direct tomorrow, and, and it's, it's like, great. Oh, when is it's it? So I would have waited three months. Like, no, it's tomorrow. No, nah, it's oh, so okay, good. Cool. I love it. Really so, love it. This was an interesting direct. I think there was a lot of good stuff shown. I think it'll be mm. disappointing depending on your gaming taste. So, mm, yeah. if you do you are, like Hollow Knight? You're gonna cry. You're it's gonna cool. cry. It's fun. Do you like JRPGs? Because if you do, this is <laughs> Sandy's crying. J- JRPGs were were thick and fast in this direct. Yeah, like, they really were. They were. It was like JRPGs and nostalgia was yeah, big so, in this direct. I mean, like, I suppose one of the biggest announcements was uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is coming to Switch. That is that is like their, you know, one more thing. Remind me, is, has that not been announced before? No. I, for some reason, I thought it was announced. Maybe I, it was it, like rumor or it something. It might have been the thing of like, yeah, they're, oh, they're working on a Xenoblade 3, whatever. So okay. that, that's coming. Cool. Okay. But there were a lot of um, JRPGs that are just from yesteryear that it's like hey you remember this cool jrpg we we're giving it the the 2.5 hd treatment a la um what's a game called you know what i'm talking about the, like project triangle strategy it's like the octopath traveler octopath traveler it's it's that sort of look where it's an old game but it's been made 3d okay yeah 2.5d yeah. so there's a lot of that stuff on some old beloved games that are now coming to switch i think the biggest one was called Chrono, what is it called? Chrono Cross. Chrono Cross. Um, I th- a lot of people were very. I thought that was just that. a remaster, though, not like a remake. I don't. I don't think it's a remake, but it, it is coming. So a lot of people okay. are like, "Cool." I know people um, love that game. So. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, there was one called um, God. What is it called? Uh, Love oh. Love. Um, yeah, I've I've never heard of that game, but people went mental. Never over that heard thing. about it, but can I tell you the premise of that sounds really cool. It reminds me a lot of um, to like. Chrono Trigger is 
I think the predecessor Wait, Chrono to Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger. No, no, it's Chrono Trigger. Thing. I think it's the predecessor oh. to Chrono Cross, and I think I could be wrong, but I think both games have a lot of time shenanigans happening in them. Um, Lava Love, from my understanding, is that it's similar in that you have char- a lot of characters from different time periods, and it's just okay. this very old JRPG that's getting like a modern release, so people lost their shits. Um, I mean, it's cool that there is literally an old ass game that. Mm. Presumably, a lot of people have never heard of, and it's like, cool, I'll give that a go, you know? Yeah. Um, I know the the first front mission, the first two front mission games also getting remade, mm. which is cool. Exactly. Uh, Giant mechs are making a comeback, so that's rad. <laughs> yep. Um, um, it was, let's, but, let's just go through this list here. Yeah, um, because outside of JRPGs, there, there were some, some <laughs> other Kirby. things coming. <laughs> we'll get to this, this Kirby. Kirby story in a bit. So <laughs> kicking off the direct, we had a... Basically, a Fire Emblem Muzo game, like a one versus three million people story. In I swear to God, they've made one of these before. I don't a Fire know. Emblems one. I seem to recall there being a Fire Emblems one, like on 3DS or something. Maybe um, I might be wrong, but yeah. So Fire Emblem uh, Three Hopes, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. Oh wait, you, yeah, you're right. Fire Emblem Warriors is back. So okay, cool. So yeah. there was one at one point. Um. um Cool. We, we're going to fly through this list. Uh, Advanced Wars 1 and 2. It's coming yeah. on April 8th. Excited. Oh, have you played Advanced Wars? I've, I never no, have. But, I know but, they're, uh, they're but it seems like the sort of game DS. I'd like. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no Man's Sky is coming to the Switch. This is crazy to can, me. I would love to see how this runs on Switch. Can I tell you? Have you, you haven't watched the direct, have you? I've watched. Oh, I watched the trailer for this. Oh, series. God. No. So I'm... Um, a hat off to this team for getting No Man's Sky to work on the Switch, but good lord, does it look like there have been some concessions made? <laughs> I mean, but it if, struggled on last gen consoles. But like, it, it was worked, not the best experience. It works. There. It's running on Switch at 240p, but it. <laughs> it's still. What's wild to me about that game is just like how the trailers can invoke the same sort of. I mean, it's. Next year, it will be 10 years since that game was first revealed. What? And like the trailers still evoke that same sense of, oh my God, this is kind of fucking incredible. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, I still yeah. love that redemption story that the game was like it a big is, flop yeah. and then... It's, it's a great... Like a rede- and like the, the, the content they keep putting out for the game is monumental. Mm. It's really... And it's all free as well. So it's yeah. pretty great. Yeah. Um, do you like Ronaldo? Because- <laughs> yes, we're getting Mario <laughs> Soccer. So we're getting Mario Strikers Battle League Olé. coming. Olé. Goal. <laughs> coming June 10. Um, Splatoon yeah. 3 does not have a release date yet, but we did get a tease. Did you watch that trailer? It was yes, a I did. very bizarre trailer for a More co-op salmon marriage. run shenanigans. Yep. Very excited for um, that co op nonsense. I love Splatoon, so very excited. I've not played a Splatoon, so 3 I'm be... fucking shocked by that. Yeah. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, two front mission games are getting remade with the one due this summer in America um, and the other one following sometime. Uh, Disney Speedstorm, which is basically Mario Kart with Disney characters, it looks like. It's coming There's through. a lot of Mario Karts that like coming out. There's the, the Chocobo so racing one so coming. Yeah. So weird. I think yeah. this one's free to play, if I'm not mistaken. There was something shown... Maybe it was so, this. so it's Disney. So can I get Darth Maul? Probably in a racing <laughs> cart. Um, mm. in a in a keeping with the Disney trend. Uh, your favorite game, Star Wars: The Force Unleashed. This game is <laughs> fucking great. You ever wanted it's, to play a God of War game, but Star Wars? That game, okay. Force Unleashed, pretty great. It's coming to Switch on April twentieth, along with the Assassin's Creed Ezio collection, which we mentioned earlier, at February seventeenth. Um, Wait, does that say hit Switch and mobile? What? And mobile? Can I play suit? an Ezio game on on my phone? That's wild. Apparently, uh, <laughs> rollout win. I don't know. Uh, a Chrono Cross we mentioned is coming out on April seventh. That's damn soon, just around the corner. And then we got the game of the show, hands down. Kirby and the Forgotten. <laughs> 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 this game looks so cool. Kirby I'm and the so Forgotten Land is is the child of. Kirby and the Last of Us, for all intents and purposes, and maybe a bit of Mario Odyssey. They showed off um, a mouthful mode, which shows Kirby just possessing a car. If you're watching the video feed, it is very weird. Um, that oh, is out I love it. March 25th, the month after Elden Ring. Um, oh, yeah. MLB The Show coming to Switch. This also looks like, I don't know how it's going to run on Switch because the trailer was like, whew, 
it's a bit touch and go. It looks like mm. there's some some con- mm. concessions made. Yeah, and and I guess that game like. I mean, on consoles, has always looked really good. So yeah, it's, it's, I also deal. think it's looked pretty good. <laughs> it's running on Switch, but damn. Mm. Yeah, got to hit them baseballs. Good lord, we there, there are tons of games. Like I know I said, it's a JRPG fest, but there are there are some good games coming to Switch. If you like Klonoa, an old school game, also coming to Switch. But I think the big one, Portal, is getting a Switch collection, which is real good. If you've never played Portal. That, that game should run on Twitch, no problem. It's also fairly yeah. Old, so yeah. yeah. Portal's a great um, time. Like again, if people never played it on PC or whatever, oh, just two fucking one great of the games, best games like, ever made. So oh yeah, one of the best sequels, sequels ever made. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Lava Love coming to North America on July twenty second. Uh, this this one gave me so much joy. Wii Sports is coming back. Um, in the form of Nintendo Switch Sports. So we're going to get the good old bowling, good old tennis, all of that stuff. Uh, golf's not there on launch for some reason. It's being added as uh, additional content. But they are adding new games like soccer and badminton. So yeah. Did you ever I'm going to come Wii over Sports? and fucking destroy you at yes, Nintendo my, Switch my Badminton. My brother and I played the shit out of Wii Sports. On the, Wii. the only the only knowledge I have of Wii, Wii Sports was I remember a friend of mine had a Wii. He was the only one who had one. And I remember we played the baseball game and he was like, oh, look how you can jippo the pitching. You could just take the controller and like wiggle it really fast and the ball mm. would just like fucking fly at the at the batter. I was like, this it's is great. stupid, <laughs> but this is great. <laughs> Um, there's a game called Rhythm Festival coming to the Switch. It's mm. like a, I don't know. Oh, it's it's one of those Taika no uh, uh It's like the drumming games that used mm. to be at arcades. The yeah. those are really fun. It looks yeah. like a lot. There's of one fun. on Game Pass at the moment. How do you play it with it with the controller? Oh, I like, don't know. Uh, Triangle Strategy got a new demo, and the game. This is game looks out. so weird. I it's, I don't know if I'm into this game at all. I mean, the demo lets you play the first three chapters, which seems to be like, I don't know how long the chapters are, but that seems pretty like a nice chunk of game time mm. to determine whether you want the game or not. And that that uh, progression carries over. So when the game launches, you can just That's pick cool. up where left off. Um, a cuphead, the delicious last course, is coming to Switch on June thirtieth. I presume oh, that's yeah. that's obviously multi platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, Metroid Dread is getting two new difficulty modes. So Dread for I think it's one laugh. Yeah, uh, it's one you laugh. Die, that's it. And then Rookie for it just makes the game a for little me. bit easier. And then a boss rush mode, which is quite cool. The that's bosses cool, in that game yeah. are super good. Uh, this this news simultaneously excited and pissed off people because <laughs> Earthbound <laughs> and Earthbound Beginnings are coming to the Nintendo. Or they were added to the Nintendo Switch uh, online service. And then uh, people waiting for Mother 3 will still get nothing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Earthbound and Mother are the same series. They're just mm. different names and different yeah. regions. But yeah, people have been waiting for a Western version of Mother 3 for literal decades mm. and still nothing. Yeah, Still nothing. Uh, then there's a quick sizzle reel. Zombie Army 4 Dead... Uh, Zombie Army 4 Dead War arrives on April 26th. Uh, gets a Fuma Den. I don't know if I say it. Love that. Right. And Dying Moon is out today. That looks really pretty i like the trailer for that uh mm-hmm. the demon slayer game arrives on june 10 and then this this i've never heard of this game in my life but lego brawls have you heard of that it's is that where you wrestle someone but you scatter lego blocks on the floor so when you suplex them it hurts Le- no Le- <laughs> oh damn it <laughs> literally super smash brothers but the lego version i was like what okay yeah. uh, I can like, i get okay. lego darth maul uh, no <laughs> <laughs> Can't just get Darth Maul all these things. <laughs> um, and then Two Point Campus arriving on okay. May 17th. The, this the announcement as well. Uh, simultaneously excited and pistol people. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is getting an influx of new content in the form of paid DLC that consists of 48 Listen, courses. I don't know why people are pissed off about this. Two things. Mario Kart 9 is not coming for a long time. No. If you pay any attention... To, low, uh, to Nintendo's earnings, Mario Kart 8 is it's still, still selling money. like fucking mm. crazy. So for them to just cut and like cut Mario Kart 8 off and start a new, that's super not going to happen. Not, I don't yeah. think it's for the next Switch that's going to happen. No. 
Um, and 48 tracks is a lot of... Co- that's more than the number of tracks in the game right now. Mm. So, like, it's going to feel and like a new game. Like, you know, it's funny is that I think... Uh, how much does it cost? Is it twenty five dollars? It's thirty dollars, I think, and it's included as part of the. It's, in, it's granted not the, super well priced expansion pass, but at least it's adding but it's, some value. It's there. there. I mean, and you, yeah. I think what's worth pointing out is that maybe look, if you don't want to pay for the service, like a hundred percent, it's 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 still pricey. Of course, but, of course. I mean, if this trend continues, you know, at the moment, if you're a big Animal Crossing fan and a Mario Kart fan, you're paying for the service to get the, this content included. Um, yeah, which is quite yep. cool. But I mean, what what's the service going to look like in a year when you know there's more shit added to it? Mm. Um, I mm. don't know. We'll see. And then, like we mentioned earlier, Xenoblade Chronicles Three was used to close out the show with I some d- of the best worst Aussie slash British accents you've heard in your life. <laughs> I did see someone <laughs> mention something on Twitter regarding Xenoblade Chronicles Three, which made me like nod in agreement. They're like. There is no excuse for Pokemon Arceus looking the way it does when Xenoblade Chronicles looks but can I that tell you on what the I, same platform. What I did at the office on Thursday. So we, we're going to the office on Tuesdays and Thursdays now. And I had my Switch with me because good John Michael Michael, he's, he's living that Animal Crossing life. Good old liquid cool my balls, John Michael Michael. That's him. He's, he's out here looking to sell his turnips. I'm like, cool fam, I'll check my turnip prices <laughs> for you. Um, but towards the end of the day, cool like tennis. the last 15 minutes of the day, we were busy just chatting about the Nintendo Direct. And I said, I know you've never played Xenoblade, but you can't deny the game looks really pretty. Mm. Yeah, that, that trailer had some some set pieces like, damn, like that's really nice. Even for the Switch, it looks really mm. good. Mm. And then I, pull, I had the trailer open and I pulled out my Switch and I put on Pokemon Arceus and I held it in front of the screen. And I said, what is Nintendo's excuse? I mean, what is a yeah. Game Freak's excuse? Because I mean, to be honest, Digital Foundry did a video, you know, analyzing Ar- Arceus's like <laughs> graphics, and they were like, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 fucking blows this thing out the water. And I'd, that I'd runs perfectly fine on Xenoblade Switch. Xenoblade Chronicles like, 1, in some cases, looks better. Like, yeah. yeah. So it's for, it is not a hardware thing. It is Game Freak just not getting the best out of whatever fucking engine they use. And I hope to God that. Given they are one of you know owned by one of the biggest companies on the planet, that they get their shit together in that regard. Because mm-hmm. uh, some of the shit in Arceus, like Arceus, Pokemon models look great, but those environments, they look uh, fucking embarrassing. Just remind I'm sorry. me what I need to do is I need to take a screenshot when you use a Pokeball in water, because when that Pokeball lands in the water, it is so pixelated. I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. I need to. I need to get a screenshot. It's of just that. It, it, it. Like you said, there's no excuse, and Nintendo should not be allowing this to no. be honest, because it makes them look bad. Like, yeah, they have Breath of the Wild, they have Mario Odyssey, they have all these games that make use of the limited hardware in creative and mm. good ways. They use art style to cover, you know, the the limitations. Mm. And Game Freak are just like fuck that. Like, I just don't get it, man. I, yeah. I really do not get why they get a pass all the time. That, so that maybe because the games just sell well and no one they, actually gives a shit. So. Well, not on news this week, but last week, I think Pokemon Arceus sold 6.5 million copies in its first week. Zaz. Yeah, well, there there's you your go. answer. It just there's sells your well. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, well, let's, let's just bounce to some some last pieces of news because we're running long and tooth here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake will be more horror-focused. Um, yeah, according to some reports, um, Imran Khan... Red fan bite uh, put out oh, a report this is r- written by good Paul Darren Bone <laughs> Oh, lo- love that guy! Love that guy! Love to see it. Um, yeah, yep. so apparently there were some early betas when the game was first being developed that had mm. the game be like set at night and a bit more spooky. And we know that mm. a lot of those concepts actually got used in what would end up being Devil May Cry. Mm. Um, but yeah, it seems like the the remake, which hasn't actually been announced yet, um, might be going for that. Um, Mm. That's one thing I actually never mentioned is uh, I've been playing some of the the HD HD. project on PC, which is interesting because it's not a HD remaster. It's not meant to make the game look fundamentally different. It's just like the PC port originally used N64 in uh, GameCube textures. So... You know, they did a whole rework of that and sure. it really shows. It's like really, really good. Um, so if you never played it, it's like 50 bucks on Steam. The mod is free. Ooh. 
my goodness. would recommend. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I, I, it's interesting because I think some people will be like, oh, but Resident Evil 4 is about that, you know, more action mm. RE vibe. I don't mind. Like, mm-hmm. RE4 exists. It's fine. It's there. Let's see what and they also, do with the remake. And also, like, people are being precious about this. Have we not forgotten that Capcom <laughs> have literally fed us so well with Resident <laughs> Evil Remake 2? Cut this team, like, a bit of slack. <laughs> they've literally eating. delivered, <laughs> like, they've literally delivered one of the best, I mean, the, the bar for what remakes should be. Mm. And here are people still second guessing that same team. Like, fucking just let them do their thing. Like, honestly. Yeah. Um, Ubisoft are turning a Valhalla DLC into a standalone Assassin's Creed game. Um, and it is, I think you play as Basim. Yeah, it so is more remind me, Basim is the assassin who appears at the beginning of Valhalla, correct? Mm-hmm. And yeah, you, you, you do stuff with him throughout the game. Um, okay, apparently he's got powers. How does that work? Don't know. Remember, Valhalla is my first Assassin's Creed, so this is all uh, yeah, phew, right. brand new okay. to me. Um, but yeah, I think what you and many others are very excited for is that this Assassin's Creed is going to a more original, stealth-focused oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. system. Which is cool because me having played Valhalla, I was like, this this is just... I enjoyed the stealth it. Stealth straight up the is stealth broken is just in that game. not a thing. You can just YOLO through a camp and that's cool. Um, so yeah, that's coming. Yeah. I don't know when, but at some point. Um, and then last piece of news. <laughs> Battlefield 2042 refund petition gains over 120,000 signatures. Oof. Rip. Uh, well, Listen, let, let's just I, let's just do a, a live update right here. What are we on now? Oh wait, that's it goes that? from bad to worse. Like, where's, oh, here we go. It's on one hundred and sixty thousand. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, listen, I uh, I don't really know. I I can understand now why EA has basically sent over Vince Zampella, um, you know, uh, the co-founder of Respawn, to kind of mm. revive um, Dice. Mm. Uh, because boy, I do not know what the fuck is going on there. Yeah. Um, and also the fact that like EA has really put all of their eggs into the respawn basket for the next couple of years. Like they are making a new Star Wars shooter. It's not going to be Battlefront three. Mm-hmm. They are going to make a new Star. You know, they're making Jedi Fallen Order two, and then they're making a strategy game. And Dice is just up here going, "We are trying to put out every single fire that we created with Battlefield twenty forty two. So. Yeah. yeah, I would not be shocked if we don't see Battlefield for a while. Mm. Like, it feels mm-hmm. like every time it was just building up to there is going to be a catastrophic, terrible one, and this is mm. it. You know, they, they need to do like a reboot of the franchise. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, after this, definitely, because I think they've absolutely destroyed the yeah. any sense of like brand loyalty after this yep. game. Yeah, and there you go. That's that's all the gaming news. For that week. is new, gaming news. New Call of Duty uh, on its on its way to selling more copies. Battlefield rip. <laughs> yeah, essentially. <Gone. laughs> Remember when every year was like, oh, who's gonna win between Call of Duty and Battlefield? Now it's like, will Good Battlefield Lord. not be terrible? Nope. Turns out no. That's not the case. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's news. Shall we bounce to? Questions. questions if you want to send us a question you can email us check at gmail.com you can all also find us on all of them social platforms checkpoint chat uh oh at checkpoint chat on twitter on instagram on facebook and all of those good places um what's so up we've got questions from last week we'll start with chelo zede it says will ah, sandy chelly wary <laughs> will sandy be joining on tuesday nights for among us to end chillery with did i join nope, nope. Gone. Rip, is he gone now rip cello gone gone but not is he gone yeah, he's, Has, yeah, he, did he, he take a gaming today. laptop to wherever he went ah mm-hmm. oh, damn <laughs> thought it would be rid of him the track main is still on the cards because that's one Fuck. game you can play without lag problems so. no he'll just he'll just complain about the internet there now yeah stories of our lives Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. we have a question from Bester Bash who says, who asks, does Matty regret choosing the Otter yet? So, <laughs> in Pokemon Arceus, you get three starters. You get Cyndaquil, uh, Rowlet, mm-hmm. and 
uh, os, os, ocelot, ocelot. You see, you can't even <laughs> say its name and you chose it. I can't even remember the damn thing's name. But I ocelot. chose it. Ocelot. Ocelot. It's Ocelot from Metal Gear Solid. Um, it's, <laughs> Liquid it's Ocelot. O- ocelot. Uh, ocelot. I, don't, I don't regret it. I think it's a very cute Pokemon. It's um, All three of those starters are from different gens, correct? Yeah. Okay, well, that's cool. Today, uh, today was interesting because I stumbled upon a Piplup, who was my starter Pokemon in Emerald. Okay, Not Emerald. <laughs> did you did you Pearl. kill it with your new otter friend? <laughs> I, I caught it, so I'm ready to to relive my my Pearl life with the little baby pink. I would have chosen Rowlet, but I'm biased towards owls. So also, I think Cyndaquil Rowlet's fucking cute. sucks. Cyndaquil is a basic fire bitch. Has there ever been a good fire starter? Of course, Charmander. Oh, dude, no. Sco- Score Bunny. And Sword and Shield was a great starter. I love my I Score think Bunny. actually that's the only good fire... That's the mm. only gen that I would choose the fire starter. Mm. I like my... Because, like, first gen is Squirtle. Come on, please. <laughs> Second gen is Cyndaquil, and you're telling me you're going to choose Cyndaquil over Totodile and Chikorita, please. Oh, come on, get out I of don't here. know who's in the third gen. So <laughs> that's the extent of our knowledge. I plead the fifth. <laughs> we have a question from Gary who says, or well, Geek Physique Zeta, who says, What is the worst game you've ever played? One for review and one you bought not knowing the outcome. Hmm. Well, huh. I definitely know the one for review. Um I think I've spoken about this before, but I'm I sure have. 2012, 2013, very early into the reviewing days. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played a great, not so great shooter called Body Count, uh, <laughs> developed by Codemasters, who now make mm-hmm. all the racing games. And this is why they make racing games and not shooting <laughs> games, because boy, that game fucking sucked. It was oh so sh- I think in my review, I literally said, if every copy of this game was loaded up onto a truck and that truck had a catastrophic accident, the world would be a better place. Wow. <laughs> That's rough, man. That um, game fucking sucks. It is so shit. The shooting's bad. The story's nonsensical. Worse. It is so bad. It's just terrible. My goodness. Like, yeah. Okay, well, what about the game you bought? Or was that the one you that bought? I, that I'm not so sure about. Um, I've bought many a bad game before. Um, Too many. I mean, I can talk about one that was very disappointing. I don't think it's a bad game. Um, but we were talking about it today, awesome. uh, the Force Unleashed Two. Yeah, that game is just like hella disappointing because it is literally like four hours long. So it was like so hyped for the sequel, bought it at full price, got home after school on a Friday by eleven o'clock that night. I'm rolling credits. I'm like, wait, wait, what is this? It? Like, now, yeah. Then that's the point. You're like, now I have to speed run this game. If you get my full value. I, would, I cannot tell you how disappointed I I'm was sure. in the game. Baby Sandy crying. <laughs> Even Darren today was talking about how disappointed. It, you see, so it wasn't just me. Mm. I was baby Sandy, hella disappointed baby about the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, well, I suppose on my, my side, I reviewed a Vita game, um, the Muppets movie Vita game. Oh, God. It was <laughs> God. actual, for lack of a better description, actual doo doo water. Um, <laughs> not a good game. The very, very disappointing. What did you have to one. do in it? It was like a platformer. platformer? Okay, yeah, but that's it was what I not it would good. Be. Like Real platforming as Kermit the Frog. Wait, Kermit's as, not a Muppet, is he? Yeah, Kermit. I think is Kermit, he a Muppet? Okay. It is. It is just bad. I, I think I've blocked it out of my memory. Did you get um, to sip tea as Kermit? Do I sip tea? Like oh, the, no, uh, I the wish. Meme. Did I get to wear a robe like a? Dark, dark side Kermit? No. They do it. Fortunately, no. Do, do it. Uh, as for one I've bought, it's not a bad game, but for some reason, I uh, bought into the Dishonored Harp. Um, and interesting. This is, this is interesting because I can't say I was one to really, you know, pre order or buy a game. Yeah, you know, with, with some rare exceptions, but I wasn't one to just order a game like on a whim. Um, and Dishonored mm-hmm. was one of those games where. Uh, I think at the rage that year, I don't know if it was take a lot or someone had a stand where you could basically queue for a discount voucher that you could spend on something. Or maybe I do BT recall games. that the thing. I yeah, it was BT was. games had that they had like vouchers you could spend on like new games. You could like yeah. fucking fifty so rand got, off and everyone's like Yeah, so I got like fifty rand or hundred rand or whatever it was. It's like 
yeah, let me let me buy this Dishonored game. And again, Dishonored is not a bad game, but I just knew very little about the game. You're just super hyped. People are very excited for it. And I just did not get into it. I don't know why. Strange. Huh. Yep. It's uh, strange because you, you enjoyed Prey, didn't you? I did not play Prey. I played okay. I played the original Prey. Yes. Okay, no, that different yeah, developers. Completely entirely. different, yeah. Um, um interesting. I think if you went back and played Dishonored I'd Voice, probably enjoy you know, it. more specifically probably Dishonored 2, like you'd probably enjoy it because it's it's very much a immersive sim and stealth. And I've that but, to me seems like a good intersection for your interests, you know. Yeah, I mean? but it's also I've I've changed as a gamer. I mean, maybe yeah, back of then, course, of course. I just didn't, yeah. didn't vibe with it. Um yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. And I think Ooh. now that you've played um, Deathloop, you'll see a lot of yeah, inspirations for Deathloop mm. yeah, come through um, there. I love the shit out of Deathloop. So. I think yeah. you'd really love except, Prey as well. Except that ending. Prey is rip. Pretty... <laughs> yeah, guess what? Prey also has a pretty terrible ending. Really? So that no. just seems like an arcane thing now. So yeah. Um, last question on Twitter from Jared Brapra. He says, Bra-bra. Hey, Alessandra and Matthew, hope you guys are well. Number one. Are you ready for all the game releases coming this month? Yo. We are not uh, prepared. There's, there's not prepared. Much. There's so much fucking happening. Yeah, there's just tons. So, I'm just like, yeah. I've got to roll credits on Sifu before Forbidden West next week, and I have to roll credits on that before Alden Ring the next week. So, Yo, welcome. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then question two, with all the gaming consolidations being made of late, what game would you like to see being made between studios? For me, I'd love to see Bethesda handing over for the Fallout IP to Obsidian to make a new Vegas 2-esque game or some character crossover title. That sounds cool. Yeah, I personally would be shocked if that doesn't end up happening Mm. um, because people have been wanting a new Vegas 2 or a new Fallout from Obsidian for a while. So I reckon that is on the cards somewhere. That is a big, like, nostalgia play. Mm. Um, Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, you touched on a, a good idea earlier of, of um, the people who made Ghostwire Tokyo. Just let them make a Doctor Strange. Doctor game. Strange, yeah, that'd be fucking cool. I mm. think, given just the animation shenanigans going on there, that'd be rad. Um, mm. I think if we're talking, you know, acquisitions and like crossover stuff, let <laughs> bring this shit full circle, or you know, at least as close as you can come. Let Rare make a Crash Bandicoot game. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just uh, let them do it. What a Just. time to be alive. Uh, Crash That'd be cool. on the Xbox Get, get Banjo-Kazooie, Crash, and Spyro in a single game. See, that that could be quite fun. I mean, it's not, not far-fetched now. because Literally Xbox all the mascots all that Microsoft was competing against now Just early put them on in Microsoft. the same game and put it on Xbox. I'm there for yep. that. Yep. My God. That'd be cool. Yeah, that, that would be... <laughs> I'd pay money to see that. Mm-hmm. Pay money to play mm-hmm. it. Um, I don't know. My, I think my answer is quite boring, but I'd love to see that. You never played the PT demo. I ever. didn't. No. I, I'd love to live in a universe where Kojima got to finish that game. Um, because, like, granted, it it was a demo only an hour long, and I don't know how you keep that tension for like a full length mm-hmm. game, mm-hmm. but. I don't know. Uh, Kojima is just a dude who does things. In Kojima is just ways. a dude. He does. Yeah. He does Kojima things. Like he made. A, <laughs> he does Kojima things. For yes. for lack of a better term, he made a fucking walking simulator, like an an actual literal walking simulator where you deliver boxes, and it's one of the one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I enjoyed yep. the shits out of it. I mean, put pitch put. Put me in a boardroom and let me listen to that pitch. I'm like, no, this sounds dumb. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd love to just I, see. I, I've seen yeah. people say that the uh, House of Benevito section mm-hmm. in Resident Evil Village is very PTS. It's very PTS. Yeah, it's I like would not survive a full game like that. <laughs> that was too much see, stress. The thing is, it's it's very stressful. But I'd love to see like what would a full length Silent Hill first person game look like. Mm-hmm. I mean, because mm-hmm. like. It's the same with Resident Evil 7, right? That that took inspiration from PT as well. It's like, well, what That's is Resident true. Evil yeah. but first person? And granted, that game falls off in the, the last third because, you know, it turns mm-hmm. into an action shooter. But mm. the first two thirds of the game were really oh, good. terrifying. So, yeah. yeah. I, I'd just love to see Kojima do more Kojima things, I guess. Just give him 
what what property could we give him? <laughs> I just don't give, want a gigantic fetus baby thing no, chasing me give, around the house again. That was horrifying. Give Kojima Mario Kart 9. To make. Oh, hello. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, Let, I'm let's down see what for you that. Do. <laughs> down for <gasps> We could get Playground Games to make a new Crash Team Racing. Fuck. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Crash Team Open Racing World is. Crash Team Racing in the Mexican Desert. Fucking do it. My goodness. Hire me, Microsoft. Yeah, imagine they're like we, we you've had Lego in Forza Horizon 4 now. Like, get ready for Crash Bandic- uh, Crash Team Racing in Forza Horizon 5. That could be such a cool DLC pack. I mean, they've done shit like Hot Wheels and Lego. Exactly, and yeah. So they've done ludicrous shit. So what if they just get like the nitrous oxide track from fucking Crash Team Racing and just plop and crash in there. there in a Ferrari? Mm, speaking guys cra- crazy speak here <laughs> guys just do it and oh get like goodness. a really polygonal looking crash bandicoot <laughs> like with these ultra realistic cars just oh looks so Sounds great like a good time yep oh, goodness. that's it that is all the questions that's if you want to send us uh questions like these fine folks except for cello you can email sure. us checkpoint chat podcast at gmail.com you can also f- find us on social platforms at checkpoint chat on all Twitter and Facebook and all of those good things. All of the places, I think. Uh, and that's, uh, that's that's kind it. of it for episode uh, 175. It's a casual 9 p.m. on a Friday evening. Mm-hmm. I am got, very tired. Got some I might go sleep peace right fly. now. <laughs> Yo, what time no, do you fly tomorrow? It's six in the morning. Oh, Jesus Christ. Like, what a bit the airport okay. at like half past four or five, so... Okay. Let's, okay. Let's well, wrap this nonsense up so I can do <laughs> and go eat your curry. Go eat my oh my god, go oh, I'm so hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah, you so it. much for listening. As always, we'll be back next week, uh as compending. Um, mm-hmm. but we should be fine. But yeah, we hope you have a lovely week going forward. Thank you for the support, and we'll see you next time. Love you long. Check my chat. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.